time. Let me not waste time. Let's get straight into the program this evening. I've been waiting for this to come. And uh, I'm very, very excited to be joined by a fellow colleague of us that's coming from the Department of Military Veterans. And this is none other than the Acting Deputy Director General of the Department of Mil Military Veterans. His name is Mbulelo Musi. Mr. Musi, thank you so much for your time. Pretty excited to see you coming into the studio. Been wondering where on earth is he? <laughs> he's since said to me he's going to be coming and I uh, haven't seen him in a long time. Welcome. Thank you, Karabo, and good evening to all your listeners. Uh, it's, it's quite a pleasure always with, with you and to, to talk about matters of importance for military veterans. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. In fact, tonight, we're going to be talking about the educational support for military veterans and their dependents. And that's what we're going to be talking about this evening. And you're probably wondering, who on earth are these people? What's so special about them? I'm not the person that's going to be answering those questions. Mbulelo is going to be doing that. Maybe let's kick off with a simple question, really, Mbulelo. The concept of the establishment of the Department of Military Veterans, where does it come from? Well, basically, to thank, um, thanks. That's an important question, Karabo. Uh, you would have known that um, there's, South Africa comes from a particular history, um, a history of various conflicts in various times. Um, military veterans would have started with those who, were, who would have been involved in a conflict in, in the First World War. That just post the you know, um, uh, establishment of the Union of South Africa. Subsequent to that, um, we also had conflict during the Second World War, which also produced military veterans. And then we also had the Liberation War mm -hmm. that would have started in the 60s, ending in 1994 with the advent of democracy and freedom in our country. So these three epochal periods in our history um, were then able to produce military veterans of different generations. Right. Now, the issue of how we take care of them is a general issue of government across the world to actually take care of military veterans in recognition of the contributions they might have made in bringing out peace and other resolution of conflicts. In the context of South Africa in particular, post-liberation in 1994, it became clear that um, the government, um, democratic government, had to make sure that it puts programs in place to be able to ensure that uh, we honor, we memorialize, we recognize the contributions that military veterans in their diversity would have made. So um, initially in post-94, in terms of institutional arrangements to take care of military veterans in their diversity, as I indicated, we had a chief directorate in the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. So it was a small chief directorate, you know, with with limited capacity to deal with these issues. Social issues, economic issues, education, housing, etc. It became clearer and clearer that those institutional arrangements were not adequate mm. because the issues that military veterans were facing were so many and so big that we needed a better capacity to deal with them. Um, therefore, in in actually 2007, 2009, the debate became very clear that we need a Department of Military Veterans with a separate budget, with requisite capacity to be able to confront the challenges that military veterans would have been faced, facing. And then in actual fact, in 2009, the ruling part saw it wise that we should have a dedicated uh, Department of Military Veterans. There was a resolution taken by its conference mm. in Polukwane in 2007. Then subsequently, then the department was finally established in 2010. Um, the president proclaimed that we should establish this department, uh, and then subsequently in 2010 it was established. Uh, it's basically a department then that focuses on how we deal with social needs of military veterans, economic needs of military veterans, with natures of employment, mm. businesses, etc. because the government believes that military veterans have contributed tremendously in bringing about this democracy. They've contributed immensely in ensuring that we have reconstruction and development in our country. They've assisted in bringing reconciliation. So they've made a huge contribution in bringing social cohesion and the concept of nation building. 
Right. On the basis of that, then the department was then established and with a clear mandate that it has to provide this socio-economic socio means for military veterans. The Military Veterans Act 18 of 2011 then stipulated what type of support we should give to military veterans. In Section 5 of that Act, the Military Veterans Act 18 of 2011, 11 benefits are stipulated. They deal with compensation for injuries during war, they deal with pensions, housing, education, etc., etc. So we want to say that um, our mandate as a department then derives from that act. Mm -hmm. And so far then we've been working hard. One of the major focuses of late has been education, precisely because military veterans, especially those from the non statutory forces, maybe let me put it this way, the history of our country produced two types of military veterans. Mm -hmm. There are those who call statutory forces. They would have come from those um, armies that were under the state of the time. Yeah. Former SADF, Transcribe, Putatswana, Siskai, and uh, um, then which we call TBVC states. Those who were from the state of the time are then called statutory forces. Then there are those who come from the liberation struggle who fought against the then regime of the time, apartheid. We call them non statutory forces. It will be a former members of Umkonto West Siswe, which was under the ANC. Mm -hmm. It will be the Azanian People's Liberation Army military veterans under PAC. It will be the Azanian National Liberation Army military veterans, which is from Azab. So essentially, the formations and military veterans that we assist would have come from, from those us. formations. Right. And emphasis of the department, because of limited budget and considering where we come from, is we must give priority to those who in the past never got any state support. Right. And those are what we call NSF, the National Statutory Forces. And the department is giving particular okay. attention to them. Of course, we do not discriminate against others. Yeah. 0800 142 that's 0800 142 that number is a toll free number. If you're going to be calling from a landline, number of people who are going to be calling from a landline, number of people who are going to be calling from a landline, so that we can take your details down and, and then have you answer uh, or, or put your questions forth for, for our guest in the studio, who is the acting deputy director general of the Department of Military Veterans. And he said a mouthful, really, uh, where the concept comes from and uh, um, such education, really, um, for those who that even didn't know that there are two types of uh, you know military veterans that we're talking about here coming from the two different um, sectors if you want to call it that the statutory and the non-statutory but one thing that i would like to ask you mr moose is this question that i i always hear people talking about it in the corridors and i don't know why because it's an open question that people can ask really there's nothing wrong about that they're saying is this does it cover all races People are under the impression that uh, you know the department caters for only black military veterans. Your response to that? Well, of course, it's an important issue once again, Karabo. Mm -hmm. It's usually too. <laughs> <laughs> um, firstly, the department is not in isolation from government in general. Mm -hmm. It is part of the arrangements of government uh, in a democratic South Africa since '94. However, it was our department is almost seven years old only. Yeah. But it is guided by the constitution of this country. It is guided by the laws of this country outside of the Military Veterans Act only. The constitution of this country describes South Africa as a non-racial, democratic, non sexist society. And therefore, we, that's where we also take you from as a department of government established within that constitution. Mm. So for, for all intents and purposes, we are non-racial for all intents and purposes. Uh, well, non-sexist. Non yeah. uh, and therefore, do we, we want to believe that uh, we do not focus on blacks alone. Mm -hmm. We focus on whites, we focus on Indians, on colors, mm -hmm. across the spectrum that reflects the democratic graphics of South Africa. So in all our programs that we roll out, uh, we, we, we are in informed by that, uh, that basis. But even more importantly, we recognize that our past would have disadvantaged the majority who are blacks. So to ad address and create an equitable society, a society where everybody enjoys 
the democratic rights enshrined in our constitution in terms of the Bill of Rights, etc., enjoy uh, <coughs> equally. So it then takes us to the issue of we have a historical duty yeah. to create an environment where blacks who were disadvantaged in the past are also given an opportunity to be like all South Africans mm. and enjoy what this democracy provides. However, this is not necessarily at the expense of others, mm. but even the demographics, 80% of South Africans are black. So naturally you'll find that many a provision that we do on services or what we call benefits, mm -hmm. as I indicated, which are stipulated in the Act, they would find resonance in majority would come, would have been from the majority of the demographics of this country, which is blacks. Yeah. But I can tell you now, there are whites who enjoy our benefits, mm. there are Indians who enjoy our benefits, there are colors who enjoy our benefits. 0800 142 446, 0800 142 446, uh, that's a toll free number. Got in from your telecom line. If you're going to be using your cell phone, call us in very quickly. We'll take your details down and we'll call you back. And that way, saving you costs. You can speak in any language of your choice. Uh, all right, so let's do that. If you've got any questions with regards to what we're talking about this evening, I'd like to hear from you. It can be a comment maybe that you have. We're also welcoming those. So 0800 142 446. We're going to be talking specifically looking at the educational support of military veterans, which is one of the programs the department is running at the moment. But uh, maybe just to take a couple of steps back, what are some of the programs that you've had in the past? Um, maybe some of them are still ongoing at the moment that maybe people don't know about. You've mentioned, of course, the Act lists a number of um, those benefits. But what are some of the recent ones that you've seen? Any successes, any challenges that you faced during those? Uh, <coughs> Uh, naturally, Karabu, because we're a new department, mm -hmm. um, we started with a very limited budget, I think of about 22 million rands, to yeah. deal with the backlog of years of challenges that are facing military veterans. So we had to prioritize within what we had. So the first program that the department started very aggressively was the health provision. Yes. Mainly because by design, people who come from war, they've got many health needs, counseling needs, physical injuries, etc., etc. We then started expanding as budget was increasing and moved into others. As we speak now, um, 2017, we're sitting at over 15,000, actually it's 15,700 in odds to get health provision free of charge, which is subsidized, which we provide through the South African Health Military Services, which is in the DOD, Department of Defense. So military veterans get free support of health. Secondly, we also now, as you indicated, which will elaborate further, we also deal with education. It's another second biggest area of focus in the department. Third one is housing. Uh, we also provide <coughs> housing in working in concert with the Department of Human Settlements. And there's a specialized program which perhaps I will hint on. That one has had a bit of a teething problems uh, because it was a bit slow, it's not moving according to the pace we want. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to say to the listeners and military veterans in particular that we have now found each other much better with the Department of Human Settlements. Right. We've got a national task team established which has identified, diagnosed the problem, why things were moving slow for the last three years. Mm. We are now sitting comfortably with a task team established by the ministry but also some officials who actually are backing up that team. We now have a target of building 1,000 or providing 1,421 houses during awesome. this financial year. Awesome, yeah. uh, it, it will be taking us for, in the last three years, we only built less than 200 houses. Mm. But we are confident now with the program which we tabled, actually as we speak now, we were together in Parliament, briefing yeah. the Portfolio Committee on Human Settlements. Yeah. And we gave them comfort that we think now we've overcome some of the teething problems and we're on course to provide. It will make a huge difference. Shelter is an important aspect of oh, human yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Because we found a situation that was very, very painful. Many a military veteran, especially those who fought for freedom, some of them are staying in shacks, some of them are, you know, sleeping streets. Mm -hmm. We see it cannot be acceptable. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that I think we're aggressively moving in that direction, it's one of the earlier programs before education. The other one that has come to the fore, which also is making a serious dent, is what we call social relief of distress. Okay. That program is comes when we realize that many, many vet veterans don't have any form of income in their houses, unemployed, destitute, etc. We then have 
identified many of them were sitting with a list of about slightly or almost 5,000 applications. We're supporting over 2,400 at the moment. We give them 1,200 a month. It's a program that is short term, but it's meant, it's almost like the, the what social development does. In right. fact, we replicated it from social from development. Social, yeah. So it's meant to be between three to six months. But right. we are finding the impact it's making is amazing. Wow. Uh, so we are moving in the direction of making a dent on poverty, uh, especially the extreme poverty among veterans. Uh, we also have other problem programs that we've started we're piloting with compensation for injuries. Okay. We already have those who had psychological problems, some would have lost their minds, some would have physically been um, injured. As we speak yesterday, I was in Cape Town. As I indicated, we went to address parliament. I met one of the military veterans, formerly from MK, um, Mr. Situ. Mr. Situ is with his, his kid. He came to the office. The kid is not at school. Mm. He has had an injury, about seven injuries, broken bones, and then through an accident recently. And he doesn't have a place to stay. When I saw him, he was in pain. And he said to me, can you do something? As we speak now, we put him on temporary shelter with the son. Yeah. Secondly, we're looking at making sure that we fast track the social relief of distress for him to have some income. Yeah. We're also going to be assisting the son, who now I'm dealing with tomorrow, to make sure that he gets a school. He can't be in the streets no, no, of course, when yes. his father is brought down as freedom. So we are making a bit of a difference with this program. I wouldn't call it a bit. That's a major difference I can tell you now. Precisely. Um, as, as we speak, um, I also got a call mm. as I was in the office today from a certain lady, um, Ritabile Masuk. Uh, she's a daughter of a military veteran. Mm -hmm. She's studying physio uh, physiotherapy at the University of Cape Town. And she was appreciating that she's doing a third year and due to the assistance of the Department of Military Veterans. So we are making a difference. Um, however, we still believe a lot still needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and, and to the extent that we believe that uh, we need a, a much more aggressive program to deal with these issues. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with backlogs, we're dealing with current issues and future issues. So essentially now we're beginning to say we must change gear. It can't be business as usual. Yeah. We must restore the dignity, especially of those we're able to bring us 23 years of freedom that we are enjoying. It would be very interesting to hear from some of the military veterans if they're listening on the line. And uh, perhaps we should go to Uppington. I believe we've got a caller, a military veteran actually calling from Uppington. I'm not sure about the name though, but is it Mate Matesi? Yeah, there we go. Matesi is on the line. Good evening to you, Matesi. Thank you so much for calling in. What is your question or comment? Matesi from Uppington? Okay, I'm not sure if we do have Matesi back. Uh, Matesi, if you are listening to the radio at the moment, uh, just stay ten, hang ten, and we're going to try to give you a call back. That was Matesi trying to reach him uh, from Uppington. However, let's go to Rudderport, and we've got Denzel. Um, trust you me, this is not Washington, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Washington is on the other side of, 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 of the world. This is our own Denzel from Rudderport. Good evening to you, sir. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thank you so much for calling in. What is your question or comment? My question is, I listen to this gentleman, he talks about non surgery and surgery forces. Uh -huh. You know, we were so get forced into the system. It's either you go to jail or you go to a reformary uh, school. And so from reformary school, you go to, uh, so you just join the army to get out of the uh, apartheid environment. And yes, we never ever that's any type of psychological treatment or ask how you feel or anything. And at the moment, on to the VDM, database of the military veterans, you know how much... Okay, I think let's close that line and call it back. I do apologize for that break in, in connection of that line. Let's, let's close it. Let's close it and try to call it back. That was uh, Denzel from Riddleport. I did try to get some of the gist, um, a bit of a gist of what he was talking about, really. He's, he's worried about, and I heard stories about this. I could not, I need to be educated about these things, you know. Um, back in the days, and, and there was a time when you were, you'd be at school, and then coming from school, you will have to go to the military. And I think I picked up something like that from Denzel. And he's saying, look, I mean, uh, that happened to some of us. And he's probably one of those people. But then he's saying, look, I mean, uh, some of us, we're not necessarily happy when that happened. And 
suffering psychological problems thereafter. How would you deal with that type of situation? Somebody like Denzel, what what would your your your, your help be? And your you know, um, we do have a lot of cases. And thanks for that to Denzel for phoning. Um, we, we we provide counseling services. Um, perhaps you may have to take his numbers. Yeah. And be able then to ensure that uh, we, we send our, he interacts with our officials who provide counseling. As I indicated, in the 11 benefits we provide, there's also counseling services mm. health serv within the context of okay. health provision. Yeah. So we will take note, and uh, if, if unfortunately for some time we didn't ask, get assistance, we want to apologize. But of course, it's because the department is new and we may not know who is suffering from where. But that is called, and others who are calling will make sure that we take their numbers and mm. deal with them. Um, to remedy the situation because we can't have people who of this nature who, who, who would be having psychosocial problems. Mm -hmm. However, I want to distinguish between what was called permanent force members in the defense force and conscripts who would serve for two years and then leave. Okay. Um, those are relatively not as worse off than those who might have been in the permanent um, force because they would have endured a lot of psychosocial problems right. like Denzel. So we do give particular attention to them, but also we, we help in such cases as Denzel. Secondly, um, the issue of the database, he hinted it, but it was not very clear. We're trying to get it, yeah. Um, we are sitting with a database now that we are cleaning up. Um, maybe there are two issues I want to raise with the database. Uh, the database um, is, is, is faced with a lot of challenges, let me say upfront, um, primarily because um, now that we're providing benefits, everybody has become a military veteran. And now we're using it. I was saying to the portfolio yes. committee uh, in Cape Town <laughs> yeah. that it is not uncommon these days to get these days to get somebody who's less than democracy but is a military yes, veteran. I'm <laughs> less than 23 years old and everybody laughed and they said it's true because they do see these young people. But, but is, is, it, is it true and how, to, what extent, to what extent do we, do we get that? Um, as to quantifying it, it's yeah. an area we're busy with, it's work in progress. It's not necessarily a significant number, but we say one is one too many. Yeah, true. Because any military, any non-deserving military veteran or claimed, claiming to be military veteran takes what is supposed to be for a bona fide military veteran true. who deserves it. So we are busy now cleaning up the database. Uh, we've set ourselves very stringent targets. Uh, we've solicited arms call with its wing called the DDSI, um, which is good because it helped the Department of Home Affairs to clean the okay. f a 50 million data. So we think that they will make a good job with us. Yeah. So we've got a task team together with CETA as well to put systems in place to check them. We also have a verification process so that we make sure that only deserving military veterans are in our database. So there's, it's work in progress. Uh, we'll be reporting from time to time. Mm -hmm. However, I want to, what I want to indicate is that we are w supposed to be working with military veterans associations, whether APLA, which is having its own association, MK, with its own associations. We want to implore them. We are interacting with them through the South African National Military Veterans, and also I'll be meeting with them as individual associations mm. to say the best way for the data to be cleaned, it cannot be the department alone. People know each other. Uh, we do know, for instance, people in MK know each other. They were in the camps, they were training yeah. together, so they can be able to verify that, no, Karabo, don't take chances. No, yeah. Not one of us. Yeah. You know, so please leave those who deserve to get it. To get, yeah. So it will need a collaborative approach between us and associations. Secondly, we want to say South Africans, who are also, some of them who are trying to take chances, must begin to be responsible to understand that what they do makes the department work very difficult because then they are smuggling themselves fraudulently into the system, get what they don't deserve, and who suffers? Is the military veterans who are supposed to, to get this thing. So we want to want to, to implore South Africans, the associations, etc., to work with us to ensure that we clean up this data, we get bona fide military veterans, so that we can provide the right benefit to be the right person at the right time and in the right place. Mm -hmm. Mr. Musi, when uh, you're actually putting it very nicely, I mean, you've been very nice about it. I mean, I'm about jail straight with Nia George. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, what she, um, when he's saying it's called a diplomas. <laughs> At a certain point, he yeah, paid a diplomas. This is over, Bob. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes, we're beginning to work with 
relevant state security agencies because we don't have the capacity. But we want to believe one persuasion first, education first. Right. And when we are clear that people, notwithstanding our efforts to try and resolve this matter in an amicable way, in a very in a humane way, well, yeah. then the law must kick in. We can't afford. No. It is equivalent to corrupt practice. It Absolutely. is equivalent to fraud, Absolutely. which is anti-constitution, anti-legislation. So we are saying that before we reach that stage, let people have their consciences right. and do the right thing. 19 before 7, 0800 142 um, I'm pretty excited to see Matesi's back. Matesi, military veteran, calling all the way from Uppington. Thank you so much, yeah. Matesi. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening to you. Good evening. Uh -huh. What is your question or comment? Yes, sir. Brother. Yes, Matesi. I joined the army in 1975. Okay. I was registered in 1974. I'm 63 years old now. And I want to apply for medical aid, medical support from the army. Okay. I several times uh, fill in complete some forms that they saw in Uppington, and they sent it to Victoria, but I did not hear something that that is that my that I'm already registered on database. Can you find out for me if I'm registered on the database for medical funding or medical aid? When last did you do this application? Can you remember? Yeah, last year I, I do it and in January also this year. So 2016 and early 2017 you did it? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Matesi will uh, definitely have Mr. Musi just uh, answer that uh, quickly. Let's go to uh, Lungam in Helderberg. Yeah, Lunga calling all the way from Cape Town. Good evening to you. And I'm going to go Thank you so much. Appreciate it. 0800-142-446. Let's chat to Pindi. Pindi is just calling uh, just from around the corner here in Pretoria. Good evening to you, Pindi. Pindi? Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Thank you so Hi, much for you. calling. Yeah. Yes, I want to just firstly thank you so much for having this show. I feel it's actually a big blessing in disguise, eh? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I, I I have a couple of questions and um, some some challenges faced. So I'm 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 a daughter of an MK and a military veteran. Okay. And we we okay. My first question is my both my parents were actually in exile. And they were MKs, and um, my father, when he came back to uh, South Africa, my my father had his fourth number, and we had the pleasures of, I think it's like that monthly income that would come in. 
And when he passed away, they we only received just like um, a certain lump sum of money and nothing happened ever since. And we, we didn't have a place to stay. We struggled a lot. Still in the midst of struggling actually with the family. My mom was given a hard time with regards to her indemnity. Okay, yeah. There's a lot of there was a lot of things that happened to the point where she actually washed her hands and said, "You know what? These things don't actually work, and it's it's not going to happen." You know? Right. And it it felt as though it was more about who you know in the system or somewhere in the offices that can help you to sort your papers and stuff. Okay. What's your so, question then, Pindi? My question is, um, we'd like I'd, I'd like to understand the benefits that my mom actually has with the situation that she currently is in, what we should be um, receiving. Um, and with the kids, I know that there's the educational facility, but it also touches on to what the previous caller asked in terms of medical aid, because so she's old now, and housing. Because we do come from the department of uh, the military, veteran department in Hatfield, and they give us different um, stories to say housing is no longer available, the month-to-month food or whatever okay. it is, you know, it's no longer available. So there's a lot of different things that chop and change. And All right, also, okay. We were on the system of the database. Yeah. From being on the system of the database, when it was time for us to apply for education and stuff, we were no longer on the database. So, and we had to restart this entire process from scratch. All right. Okay, Pindi, I think I've got, I've got your point. Thank you so much for calling in. Um, we will have Mr. Musi address uh, those questions. Let's just give other people a chance to call in. There's quite a number of them I see coming through from the screen here. We've got Tsepo calling from Klexdorb. Um, Tsepo, uh, brief and straight to the point. Uh, Tsepo, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's I'm not getting I'm not getting that line. I, I let me request that we call that let me request that we call Tsepo back. Um, uh, that line is not clear. I don't want to be wasting time. We've got such a number of people coming in. Tsepo, I'm not sidelining you. We're going to try to call you back. Uh, we're going to try to call you back, Tsepo, so that we can reset and see if we can get a better line calling you. But in the meantime, let's just go to... Uh, this is Desmond. Desmond, I see we've lost him. How? I was just about to boast, Mr. Moose. <laughs> Homeboy. Homeboy. And then now the, the phones are acting up on me. All right, we'll, 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 we'll get back to the callers. Let, let's address some of these questions in the meantime that, that's come true, uh, through. rather. Lunga wants to find out, is there a way that the department is reaching out in terms of uh, the workshop, perhaps? Because, uh, in fact, I was discussing with my supervisor earlier on, and it was, he mentioned something about, you know, those areas that are far flung in South Africa. How are you reaching those type of areas in terms of people getting this information and the assistance that you're giving? Okay, to me, Dunga was a second. I think it's fair that we have the sequence of those who asked. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one joined, they applied to, to join Defence Force in 1974 and finally became member since 1975. What is he? Yeah. <laughs> now, what he then raised was the issue of completion of forms, medical aid support, um, and this applies 26, 17, has not been given joy. Yes. Okay. First, let me apologize. It is not our intention to delay people from getting into the database. It is not our intention, therefore, to delay them getting what the, the, what we provide. Uh, I will request Uru Matese to, to, to actually come uh, give us a number. We'll follow it up immediately. Uh, by tomorrow, I think our team will call him, and I'll follow up because database falls under my competence. Okay. I'll find out what's happening about the delay in the database and make sure that this is addressed as a matter of urgency. So mm -hmm. I apologize for those delays. Second day, uh, the issue of medical aid. Uh, as I indicated, we have already 15,700, that is odds, and maybe slightly more. 
how do you provide with medical assistance uh, through the South African Medical Health Services, in particularly in military hospitals? Um, so, for all intents and purposes, I don't know how he missed the system. We took old roads. We went mm. across the provinces. Mm. I remember even in Clarkstock, we went in, in the northwest. Mm. So if he slipped out of the system for whatever reason, I think I want to advise him that he's entitled to, to that medical support. We must just make sure he's in the database. That's our condition. Secondly, we can frustrate the issue of medical support because mm -hmm. no one ought not to get what perhaps is deserving. So that's, I think we must get the numbers and we'll take We do have the numbers. Can, can, and, can and we forward those to you guys? Definitely. Right. Um, the second part then, Lunga, mm -hmm. uh, you were raising the issue of, uh, he was talking about qualification criteria. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the reach out programs, right. which is how we make sure that we are accessible. Veterans do not have, some, many of them indeed are poor. Um, and therefore they can't afford transport to be able to reach our offices, etc. Let me acknowledge the fact that indeed there are challenges. We are actually having, we just had a meeting with the executive to undertake road rules. Mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of days we'll be going, because the first request came from Nelson Mandela Bay in, in, in the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. we'll be going next week. Um, we have a schedule which we're finalizing with the, as the executive of the department. Uh, as we speak now on, on Saturday, we are going to Mbumalanga, accompanying the Deputy Minister of Military Defense and Military Veterans, mm -hmm. uh, Rep. 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 Kevin Mapatsu, as part of our reach out. Uh, we've done eight provinces. But it is quite clearer and clearer that we need to do them regularly. Yeah. Now, the one in Bumalanga, we are expecting about uh, or slightly over 200 people to attend, at Mbombela, etc. So the reach out is going on. Maybe we may have to, to then deal with all the provinces as a matter of agency. But it's a program that is t on top of the agenda of the department. So we will soon, soon be reaching out to those areas that we have not reached in, in the past. Second, the qualification criteria. I indicated that um, a military veteran would have been a person. Okay. Would have been a person who who participated in conflict uh, using military um, equipment, etc. Uh, not necessarily stone throwing. Mm -hmm. uh, we make a distinction. Now, in the evolution of our army or our our military institutions i indicated that the first generation of military veterans uh, would have been those who took part in the what was called the, the union defense force right. which was under the, the between 1910 and 1960. it then had to participate had our people participate in some conflicts one the first world war you remember we recently we commemorated the yes. centenary of Mendy. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are the generations that we deal with. That's the first generation of military veterans in mm -hmm. terms of our definition. The second generation then would have been post-1960. But in the first period, we also have those who participated in the Second World War mm -hmm. because under the Union Defense Force, the then Imperial Britain was taking our people to partake yeah. in the war. So those are within that first generation would have been those two categories. We take care of them in different ways, including providing all these benefits I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The second generation, the third second generation would have been post-1961 with the establishment of the Republic of South Africa and then subsequently then the department the establishment of the South African Defense Force under apartheid. And then during that time, then it was then in the 1960s, they also emerged national liberation, the NSF I indicated, mm -hmm. National Statutory Forces. So those are generations or those people who qualify, who took part in military activity in the various uh, con areas of conflict in our, mm -hmm. in our history. Now, criteria for qualification is that you should have been in those, in those conflicts, you should have belonged to those organizations, etc. However, we understand what, what perhaps uh, Lunga is raising. It is insofar as because of the character of the people's war during the liberation struggle, there would have been those who may not have been carrying AK-47s, bazookas, whatever weapons they were using mm -hmm. during the conflict, but would have been supporting that activity. Government has got different ways of dealing with these issues. There are programs outside the Department of Military Veterans. Ours is mainly military veterans who were in conflict in the military formations. 
right? Okay. Now, those who participated through stone throwing, through various boycotts, whether it's consumer boycotts and them, it's a broader program of government that deals with them and their conditions. Mm -hmm. So we want to make that distinction. Because government across the spectrum, besides the Department of Military Veterans, deals with matters of this nature. Mm -hmm. To alleviate poverty or eliminate poverty, to deal with unemployment, to deal with inequalities of, of, of society. In essence, all the challenges facing our society, government is dealing with them. But it is not necessarily everybody who might have been during the conflict. People would have thrown stones. They don't necessarily constitute a military veteran. Right. We have There's a definition which qualifies what's a military so, veteran. Yeah. But I must indicate one thing. We are review reviewing the legislation, the Military Veterans Act 18 of 2011, to begin to look at how these various players during the war would be looked at and therefore advise how they can then be supported outside of department by other departments and mm -hmm. coordinate the activities of supporting mm -hmm. them. I think Mr. Bruce, before we go to Pindi, I've just got somebody holding on for a bit too long here. I just want to take their call and then we'll just go back to Pindi Lane and come back. Is this uh, is this Catherine that we have on the line? Yes, I'm here. Catherine, yes. thank you so much. Straight to the point, what is your question or comment? Thank you so much for calling. Sir, I have no comment. I just have a question. Yes, go for it. My question is, sir, my grandfather fought in the 1945 war and my, my father fought in the 1938. And uh, we, uh, I acted on the, the, the newspaper in the Daily Sun, oh, so we must bring our papers, you know, so that uh, they can forward it to the offices in Victoria. Unfortunately, that fell through a uh, And uh, now I'm listening to all this. I've got uh, my grandfather's uh, 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 military number and I have my dad's military number. My uncle's here about, he also fought in, the, um, in that war over, overseas, you know. So, you know, what do I do? Because we've been made promises through a daily sun message. Everybody was running wild with all the information that we had of our forefathers that fought in these wars. So what do we do? Where do we go to? All right. Thank you so much, Catherine, for your call. Grandfather fought in the war, the father fought in the war, and I think she mentioned the uncle as well. She's got all the military numbers. She wants to find out exactly what she can do. We've noted that. We'll get back to that question quickly. I think we've got, uh, who do we have? Do we have Desmond back on the line? Um, do we have somebody on the line? Okay, we do have somebody. Uh, oh, the, okay, this is Lebo. Lebo calling all the way from Elliwell North, listening via a radio station called Takalani Community Radio. Thank you so much. Lebs. From the rural areas up until now, are so bony on a link to a long up until now, and then number two. Yaba, we want to be the RGC housing. But if you want some of them, why? 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 What is, what is it? Can you give me something to worry up until now, KD? We are now talking about the guy who is in the cover of the guy who is in the cover of the guy who is in the ex political prisoner, Molly the veteran. That is why the military veteran is in the Thank you so much, Lebo. All the way from uh, Aliwal North. It looks like we've got only about 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we're going to try to hurry through these questions. Uh, Dr. Muzi? Okay, th thanks. Um, I'm Dr. Um, mm -hmm. the daughter of a military veteran, uh, MK. Um, uh, issues of challenge of housing. Mm. Um, I, I would like to, to, to advise Lebu to, to call us. I'll leave the numbers where they can contact us right. so that we can be able to, to reach out and deal with the matters uh, to the best of our ability. Okay. Um, secondly, um, it's not only Lebu. The mother was also a military veteran. Right. I'm saying, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Pindi. Pindi, that's right. The, yes. the mother was also a military veteran who has given up. Correct. I'm saying, uh, Pindi, if anything, um, there could have been frustration that was given to your family. I humbly apologize on behalf of the department. We will then take your numbers as well, talk to your mom, mm -hmm. look at what is outstanding, what you applied for, and see how we can help. You talked of medical aid. The 
talked of housing, I would suppose that you need a lot of support from the department because the, from what you say, if your father was MK and your mother was MK, surely they should qualify. And I'm, I'm, I'm elated with the fact that you say they're in the database. Mm. I'm sure we can follow it up by tomorrow. Right. We'll give you the numbers before we leave the studio and be able to assign people to deal with it. Um, once again, apologies for any delay. I did indicate perhaps Pindila before we started that we've got 11 benefits that the law enjoins us to, to provide. Compensation, counseling, etc., etc., health, education. Right. And of course, we'll try and assist uh, based on what, what the availability of budget and secondly, what in fact uh, will, will, will be the issues that you raise to see how we can help them. We have Tsepo. Um, Tsepo um, disappeared. I'm not sure whether he's, he's come back. We also had Desmond in my melody. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those two have disappeared, actually. Yeah. I think what we have next is Catherine, who spoke about yes. uh, the grandmother, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the grandfather and the father, if I'm not mistaken, and the uncle um, who were military veterans. She's saying that she's got the military numbers of all these people, she needs help. Okay, if there's military numbers, it becomes much easier because people, from what you say, she's, uh, she, she said to Catherine, is that they would have participated in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's in the Second World War, which because the Second World War, you'll remember, took place between 1939 and 1945. Now, I said in the first generations of military veterans that the they act seeks to provide or to help are those who fought in the First World War and this category yes. of the Second World War. Yes. I'm not sure whether it's a communication issue, but I'm saying, Catherine, you will also give you our numbers. You come, we'll advise you what to do. You come with the number, the first number of these parents or grandparents, and then we'll take it out from there. Where to go, I will also give the address where you can go, but also to make it easier to travel. We'll also give you our website, we'll give you a telephone number to contact us, and then officials will then follow up your matters and keep you informed about what we're doing. Okay, so like, a bit of frustration from Lebo there, from yeah. Edible North, yeah? Yeah, um, I, I must indicate that there's a lot there's a lot of frustration that are going on. Uh, what we're trying to do with limited capacity, a young department with teething problems, is to ensure that to the best of our ability, we treat people with care and compassion. And I think we'll do the same, Catherine. If mm -hmm. in the process we failed, it is human as well to fail. I don't think it's a deliberate act to make Catherine and the family frustrated. We will do our best to correct all our own mistakes. I must indicate that we also have mistakes as public servants. Mm -hmm. Ours is to correct them, take the remedial action such that people don't suffer because they can't access what is rightfully theirs. Um, I'll go to Lebza in Alwan now. Besares. Um, which then perhaps gives us an opportunity to talk about education which we came here about. Yeah. Um, notwithstanding the fact that there will be challenges, I think we are sitting at provision of uh, bursaries and education support at the moment to 7,662. We are spending um, approximately one, oh, oh, let me say over 100 million, I'll, I'll give the exact figure. So there's a huge investment to try and make a drive to make sure that education as a basic constitutional right is provided to military veterans, both at um, basic education level and tertiary level. All right, yeah. right. <clears throat> so essentially we have made a significant, one of the mo most exponential growths we've had on provision of these 11 benefits is education. Precisely because we had a lot of demand, especially 2014, 20, no, 2015, 2016, in 2016, 2017. That's why I was sitting at 7,662, when in fact we had planned for 1,000 to provide. Mm. But when the demand was so increasing, and mm. this is an important question, I'll write, we then advised by our executive authority, the minister and the deputy, that give attention to this. It's clear that the demand is saying there's a lot of need of support, and we are sitting at a very significant number. And the budget, the budget um, does it match the demand? Um, of course, I want to indicate that when we did this exponential increase, it brought in unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. Our budget was found wanting. We have a shortfall of 151 million rands as we speak to be able to cater for new applicants, but also to cater for the backlog. However, we're working on mechanism to find a solution. I've, and then here comes in the point which I want Lebza to understand. Um, we are providing and we are going to be increasing provision. 
but it has brought challenges that require that we look at it different. Right. It cannot be government alone who must take care of our military veterans. It ought to bring the private sector to the party. Mm -hmm. It ought to bring churches, civil society, NGOs, because we believe that military veterans have helped South Africa to be where it is. We all enjoy democracy because of their sacrifices. And it can therefore not, not be only government. Of course, government must lead. Government has responsibility. But I want to believe that South Africans, South Africans must begin to say, as a way, a token of saying thank you for making, bringing back our dignity, thank you, thanking them for the sacrifices they made. We must begin to say everybody must come to the party. We must be together collectively as government, as the private sector, and everybody to make a dent. You know, I was making an example with my colleagues before we came here. I said, can you imagine even if we have 622 million rands, which is supposed to be spread in 11 benefits, and we already have shortfalls in education. If, for instance, Anglo-American was going to say, we're going to take about 2% of military veterans and their kids to yeah. educate them, yeah. we will make a huge dent. And the benefits for society are immense. I'm just illustrating with Anglo-American, it can be other big, big yeah. companies. Yeah. And of course, if we work that way, I think the return on investment will be huge. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when, when the military veterans get the, what is the education they deserve, which is a basic right, it has economic spin-offs, mm. it will help our economy grow, it will make them self related and not reliant on, on government, and therefore bring back their dignity. So we believe that uh, today we want to echo a strong message. Let's work together, government in all spheres, national, provincial, and local, working in concert with society as a whole. And I think we can make a huge difference in a short space of time mm -hmm. because limited resources are affecting us. Jonas from Mashishi, good evening. Jonas Mashishi, Malerato from Mafikeng. Yes. Yes, good evening to you. Your question, very quick, straight to the point, Lerato. Yeah, my question is that uh, I, I am a MK veteran, but I, I don't uh, benefit from any any benefit, any anything from MK. Okay, who is this? Is this Tempo? Johannes, okay. Johannes, I called out to you and you did not hear. But nonetheless, um, okay. Johannes, we've got your... I'm just looking at the time. I think your... your, your it sounds like it's a general plea. Um, I'm not getting help. What we're going to do, we'll take your numbers and we'll give it to Mr. Musi and um, he will assign people to get a hold of you and then you can maybe just uh, explain what your questions are or your problems are there. How about that? Yeah, it will be better in that way. Where is it? Uh, I would like to say Pretoria, um, based in Pretoria. In Pretoria? Yeah. Okay, send it forward. So All right, Tepo, in the interest of time, we've got Tepo's number, right? Okay, in the interest of time, Tepo will give you a call. Thank you so much for calling in. Have you got any other questions? Okay, we've Hello. got who? Malerato? Hello. Is it Malerato? It's Tepo. Tepo, your question quickly, straight to the point, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Tsepo from Klegsdorp. Uh, I think Tsepo touched on that issue that, uh, Mr. Musi, that we spoke about you and I earlier on. Uh, you ha you, I mean, you've got people post-94 claiming to be military veterans. Is there a way, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking he's saying, is there a way to make sure that we're not getting there? May, um, is the department doing something about that, which is something that you've touched on, but maybe briefly you can just elaborate to him. One thing I've heard from him, the line was not as clear, but I try to listen as, as, as much as I can. Is there continuous communication between the department and the military veterans? Uh, first, let me start with the fact that um, we, we are, as I indicated, cleaning the database. 
Uh, we are seeing a lot of challenges and we're working on it and we're seeking adv uh, um, support from various agencies to make sure that we clean up the database. Our target is that by the end of the year, worst case scenario by next year, the data is clean. Mm -hmm. The right military veteran and, and a bona fide military veteran, the database is secured. It's, it can be actually easily fraudulent and, and, and I indicated that we've got challenges that are dealing with. So we are attending to it. Work in progress and it's top on the priority of the department at the moment. Secondly, um, we, 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 we are going to be working much smarter because we want to reach out rather than people come to us. Right. And we have provincial offices that we are going to be beefing up. In Northwest, we are establishing an office which will launch very soon. We are also establishing an office in the Eastern, in, 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 yeah, in the Eastern Cape, in, 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 in Buffalo City. We are opening an office very soon in, 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 in Western Cape. We're opening an office very soon, hopefully, in KZN. So essentially now we are beginning to be clear that to make access easier, yeah. easier, yeah. we are move, we're decentralizing. We plan nationally at Pretoria, but execute in the provinces. Right. So we've got provincial coordinators that we want to begin to say they must work more closely with military veterans so that they can avoid having to travel long distances. So we are giving a priority attention, as I indicated, on Saturday, we're with the Deputy Minister in Pumalanga. Right. Next week, we are in Nelson Mandela Bay, and we'll be rolling out that regional program, and hopefully then it will begin to alleviate issues that have been raised. Mm -hmm. Lastly, on my side, because we're here about education, we, mm -hmm. should, we should not forget. I want to share with people on how they can be able to access education. Firstly, the applications are open now, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be ending on the 31st, on the 30th of September. We want to, uh, to implore military veterans and their dependents to apply on time because this time around, because of systemic challenges and many problems that we faced on late applications and its implication on our administration, this year we're going to be very strict. No late applications will be accepted. Secondly, people must go to our website to be able to know what documents are wanted because if the documents are not adequate to be able to make a decision whether to accept or not, we're not going to accept people without them because we're giving them an opportunity. So they've got five weeks to be able to make sure that they use the opportunity. So they can go to our website, www.dmv.gov.za. I want to repeat it, www.dmv.gov.za. If they also want to make some postings, right, mm -hmm. they can be able to post to our offices the applications. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here in Netfield, Headfield, next to your offices, next door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the department is private back uh, X943 um, in Pretoria. And then uh, the code is 0001. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also do hand deliveries in our offices, which I indicated, and I want to indicate that they're on 328 Festival Street, Headfield, Pretoria. Um, and then the last one, then those who are as literate, as, as, as more aff aff affluent as you, uh, they can be able to use their website. Um, <laughs> um, they can be able to access our website, which I indicated. They can go to our email, which is basiceducation at dmv.gov.za or higher education at dmv.gov.za. And then, of course, they can be able to use a toll-free line, um, which is 0800-2323-244. We hope with these mechanisms, we make it easier and quicker to access. And our commitment is the sooner we're able to reach out to everybody working together with government and civil society, the better we can make the life of military better. 14 after 7 o'clock, uh, that was the voice of Mr. Mbule Lumusi, Acting Deputy Director General of the Department of Military Veterans, Beng Zoglanda, myself. Yeah, they told me you're coming, and I thought, hey, he, he, he better be here. Actually, you came in, and I did not see you. And I was asking Lennox, where is he? He said, Kara, no, he's here. Kara, I'm like, ah, ah he's Kara not here. Other people would have called it harassment, and I hope we are not people who harass people. I but anyway, you've always been my friend. Thank it, you so it much. It depends on which side of the fence you're sitting at. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Mbulelo Musi from the Department of Military Veterans. Just quickly, before we wrap up those details, if you're going to need them, you are actually going to need them. Uh, let's start with a mail, right? If you want to uh, mail your stuff through to the department with the subject line applications, you can mail it through to the Department of Military Veterans Education Support. This is private back, private bag rather, X943. Private bag X943 Pretoria 0001. All right, and then hand deliveries. If you want to 
man just so funu uyo we beg yourself we born with your figure and it's number three two eight festival street headfield in pretoria next to the sabc adjacent to government communication and information system three two eight festival street headfield in pretoria double zero eight three if you want to do it via your website or online, um, the email address, if you want to do it for basic education, here's the email address. It's basiceducation at dmv.gov.za for basic education. If you want to do your application for higher education support, it's higher education at dmv.gov.za in the subject line for those, it's application. Right, let's wrap it up. 16 after 7 o'clock. Thank you so much to all the radio stations. If I had time, I would mention them all.